It is such a pleasure and a privilege to be with you, and it's an honor to be with you again here uh, on Wednesday evening. And we're about two days before Christmas. I think Christmas is coming up on Saturday, and so we want you to have a Merry Christmas. And today, we just, this evening, want to talk about the true meaning of Christmas, the true meaning of Christmas. And so... Christmas is truly, and you all have heard this, and we hear they sing it, man, all in the malls, and they sing it all over the place. Christmas is truly the most wonderful time of the year. And so for many, <clears throat> they are warm, they're uh, warm parties and cozy homes and fun traditionals uh, to celebrate and gifts to be shared. And it's a joyous time of celebration. And sometimes... Um, but most of the time, a lot of times, we as Christians and people that don't understand this time of year, the true meaning, they put a lot of pressure on themselves. They feel like they got to buy a gift. They feel like they got to have money. They feel like, you know, they got to be entertaining. And if they don't have a certain amount of money and they're not able to buy a certain amount of gifts and bless a certain amount of people, they get depressed. They feel overwhelmed. They got all of this stuff going on uh, in their minds and through their soul. And what we have to understand, we always, this time of year, we always have to remind ourselves the real, true meaning of Christmas. And so here is a joyous time of celebration. Nonetheless, sometimes we get lost in the season and forget the reason we celebrate Christmas to begin with. And, you know, you ask people, you know, well, well, what is Christmas? And, and most people can tell you uh, that it's, you know, they can tell you the origin of Christmas is the remembrance and celebration of the birth of Christ. Most people can tell you that. But among the hustle and bustle, their focus is lost and priorities are out of line. You know, that's why sometimes you see on TV and on the news, you see folks pile up at a store door. And as soon as they open the door, folks getting trampled on. And you have to think about this. You know, how does Jesus look at that? This is my birthday and folks killing each other, each other over presents and gifts and sales. And they hadn't thought about me at all. But I'm supposed to be the reason for this season. And they're killing each other over something that doesn't even point to me. And you have to understand, like, as like, like I was praying, this time of year is commercialized because it's the time of year when most businesses make the most of their money. And so they're going to push, they're going to push by, and they're going to push presents, they're going to push gifts. Why? Because they want you to spend money. And, and that's, what is, that's what it has become. And so people, Christians, people everywhere, they lose sight of this in the business of the holiday. And so you have to ask yourself, why did we truly celebrate Christmas? You know, we don't, we don't celebrate Santa Claus. We don't celebrate the Christmas tree or any other of the various traditions wrapped up into Christmas. And we have to ask ourselves, why do we celebrate the occasion? What is its true meaning? And so we celebrate Christmas because of the birth of Christ. That's why we said, and we got to always, and we've heard, look, we've heard the story over and over again. We've seen the nativity scene. I mean, we just know that, but it's good to keep that in the forefront of your mind. Because think about this, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when Christmas is all over, what is it that holds you together? What is it that keeps you sane? What is it that keeps you looking forward to the next year? What is it? What is it? What is it that gives you peace? What is it that keeps you, uh, uh, should I say, what is it that helps you to have good welfare? And what is it that keeps you in your right mind and your sound mind? What is it that keeps your spirit uh, stable so that you're in a situation where you understand what's real and understand that you're grateful and you understand what's important and you have almighty God in your life? What, what, at the end of the day, what's important? Because the, the presents are going to, the store is going to get your money. Mm -hmm. And they're going to, they're gonna, and you use the card, so they're going to get their money right up front off your card. The bank's going to get their money back. Everybody you owe, you're going to pay them one way or the other. 
And so at the end of the day, and then some of the stuff that you buy, it might last. It is amazing how we spend so much money, especially on our kids. Sometimes those kids play with those toys and they last about two or three hours or a day or a week. And sometimes we buy our kids stuff that we want them to have. Oh, he looks so, oh, she looks, I knew he would like this. And they don't even play with the toy. And so, you know, at the end of the day, we're wasting money and we're doing a whole lot of things. But you have to ask yourself what really matters. And then, then does, does gifts really make you happy? And then if you have the gifts and you can't pay your bills, are you still happy? If you have the gifts and you're having a good time and you go to the parties and you do all of this and you have bad health and you don't know if you're going to live or die, are you still happy? And so it behooves us to make sure that we understand the real meaning of Christmas and we understand that the birth of Jesus is really what we need to focus on during this time of the year. Isaiah 9, chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. He says this over in the Amplified. It says, for to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And we know we're talking about Jesus. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father of Eternity. Prince of Peace. Verse 7 says... Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time forth, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And so we see for thousands of years, mankind waited for the coming of Christ. They longed for their king to arrive and free them from oppression. So back in the, Jew, back in the day, the Jews, back in the Old Testament, old prophet, they prophesied about Jesus coming. You know, they looked, the people looked for the Messiah. They looked for the king. They looked for the ruler. They looked for somebody to come to deliver them from the oppression of the Romans. And even that in there, it, I mean, they were looking for a king and a deliverer, but Jesus came to deliver their souls. And so the Bible, the Old Testament is full of prophecy, including this one from, you know, Isaiah chapter nine. The Bible is full of scripture pointing directly to the one who would save mankind from their sins. When Isaiah described Jesus' coming, he described his coming as an infant. Remember, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. He came uh, in a humility, in a humble, low way. He was out there instead of born in a, you know, king, instead of born in a five-star hotel, he was born in a manger, in an animal feeding trough. But he was still God, and he was still uh, sinless, and he was still the perfect lamb. And so... We see here that when we celebrate Christmas, we are celebrating the moment in history when prophecy was fulfilled. That's what we're doing. All those things that the prophets prophesied about and this person that the prophet prophesied about and everybody was looking forward to. That's what we're celebrating now because it happened. And so God came to be with us. Jesus was called Emmanuel. We know what Emmanuel means. Emmanuel, the meaning of Emmanuel is God with us. So, so as we look at celebrating Christmas and, and salvation in Jesus Christ, because when Jesus came, he also, when Emmanuel came, he also left us with the gift of salvation. Isn't that something? So he came so that we might be saved. He came to die for our sins. He came to deliver us from ourselves. He came to deliver us from Satan. He came to deliver us from poverty. He came to deliver us from stress. He came to deliver us uh, from uh, all of these things that are ungodly. He came to deliver us because of Adam. He sinned, Adam sinned, and so death came. 
Sin passed upon all men and death passed upon all men. So Jesus came and once we received him as our personal Lord and Savior and we are born again, life passes upon all men. And so not only do we have life right now and more abundantly, but when we leave this earth, we're going to have eternal life and we're going to walk on the streets paved with gold and we are going to be around the throne praising and worshiping God. I'm so glad. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that Jesus came. I'm so glad that he gave me enough sense to welcome him in my life when I didn't know him. I didn't think I needed him, but he popped me on the head and got my attention anyway, and he saved me. And I am forever reminded that this season, I'm ever reminded that Christmas is a remembrance of the fact that he came and he did what he did for all of us. And so we see here because of Jesus, because when Jesus came, he also left us with a gift of salvation. His birth is significant because of his death. For 33 years, Jesus lived a life free from sin so that he could be the perfect sacrificial lamb for the atonement of our sins. Okay, he lived here 33 years and his life was a life of perfectness from sin. No blemish. Isn't that amazing? And you know why he had to come? You know why he had a life, a life of perfect of sin? Because when Jesus went back, his spirit, Holy Spirit now rests and rules in us. And there's a part of us, the Holy Spirit is perfect and it lives, it lives free from sin. And he's on the inside of us and he's inside of us to help the other part of us. The soul man, the mind, emotions and the will to live a life. Above sin. Yeah, we, we, we go back and forth. We do good. We do bad. We walk in the spirit. We walk in the flesh. <laughs> you know, we obey God. We disobey God. But one good thing about it is because Jesus was sinless and he was a sacrificial lamb and he was the perfect one. He's on the inside of us. We do know that we have a person on the inside of us by the way of the Holy Spirit that enables us, gives us the, the ability and the strength to be sinless. I didn't say we won't be perfect. But we have the ability to walk in the spirit. We have the ability to walk in righteousness. We have the ability to walk in godliness. We have the ability to have peace. We have the ability to believe God for healing and deliverance. We have the ability to walk upright. We have the ability to be more than conquerors. We have the ability to possess life, eternal life. As a matter of fact, we have eternal life because of Jesus Christ right Right now, not when we close these, these eyes, but we have eternal life right now. And when you know you have eternal life right now, it gives you freedom. It gives you confidence. It gives you assurance. It helps you to know that God not going to allow you to leave here until he says such time to where you have finished doing the work that he called you to do. Or you have finished doing what he has said for you to do. And so we see that here on Calvary, Jesus Christ paid the price and he overcame death so that we could have victory over sin and condemnation. So when that precious baby was born and placed in the manger, it, it, it wasn't just another birth. It wasn't just another birth because you have to understand that no man got with Mary Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. No man, as a matter of fact, the Bible says, Joseph said, you know, how is it that my wife is pregnant and she knows not a man? Uh, we're going to have to do something about this. And so God had to send an angel to, to, to change Joseph's mind, change his attitude, make sure that he didn't do anything uh, concerning Mary, but that he would just listen and walk this thing through and believe what God said that he was supposed to do. Just take care of it. I got this. And so we see here that it was, it, it was, it was the beginning of God's redemptive, redemptive plan for humanity. 
And you have to understand an act he didn't have to take part in, but he chose to do so out of love. Jesus didn't have to come and die, but he chose to do so. And so as we look at the true meaning and celebration of Christmas, this very act of humiliation, or should I say this very act of humility, and his choice to die on the cross is a cause for us to bow our knee. His, his willingness to die on the cross is a cause for us, my God, to, 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 to lift up our hands and to open up our mouth and to give God some praise. The business of this season can come, time, can, time to fly, and, and, and before we know it, you know, as we look at this season, time comes and time fly by, and before we know it, the holiday has passed. And we have forgotten to celebrate the true meaning of Christmas. Christmas comes and goes like that. But don't get sidetracked. I want to talk to you this evening and I want you to remember. And I hope you remember this. Don't get sidetracked. But make sure you get perspective. Make sure you stay focused. Choose reverence and give honor where honor is due. And wherever we get a chance or whenever we get a chance and wherever we get a chance, we need to lift up the name of Jesus. This time of year, we need to make sure that we keep Jesus on the forefront of our, forefront of our lips. We need to show people how, how Jesus look. We need to show people who we're celebrating while we're doing what we're doing this time of year. And we need to make sure that we give him all the praise that's due him. We, may, we must take time this holiday season to celebrate the true meaning of Christmas by glorifying the one who gave his all. And so we understand that a child was born in humble circumstances and his sacrificial death reflected the same. However, both were significant for humanity. Remember this, without the birth and death of Jesus, Salvation is impossible. So Jesus had to be born and he had to die in order for us to be saved and to receive salvation. Jesus coming to the earth that night changed everything. And it's a moment we should celebrate with all our hearts. Enjoy the fellowship. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the fun. Enjoy the gifts. But don't forget to point your heart, your family, and those around you, to the Christmas true meaning. Christ came with a plan for our redemption. And we just want to reiterate Isaiah 9, 6, where it says, for, 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 for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I like John 1, 14, where he says, and the world became, and the word became flesh. Jesus became flesh and dwelled, what, among us, and we have seen his glory. You can't see his glory if he didn't come, but we saw his glory because of the way he acted, because of what he did, and because of the fact that he died. But not only did he die, but he rose again. And I want to say this again. You cannot talk about Christmas without talking about Easter. You can't talk about Christmas without talking about his resurrection. You can't talk about his birth without talking about the fact that he got up. Hallelujah. <laughs> And so we see here that, that, that the Bible says, uh, uh, and we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. And then James comes here and he says it like this. James says over in chapter one, verse 17, he says, every good, hallelujah, and every perfect gift is from above. And so we understand that it says Every, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And so I want to remind you, be a blessing. Make somebody happy. 
Have fun. Eat. Fellowship. Love on your families. But make sure that you continue to pray, that you continue to praise, and that you continue to demonstrate the reason for this season. God bless you. And I want to remind you that we will not be with you next Wednesday. Uh, we'll be off the next Wednesday, but then we'll see you soon after. Okay? God bless you. And Merry Christmas.